New South Wales has liberalised abortion, taken it completely out of the criminal code, and they've uh, sprung this on the people, but now it is law. Who are the winners? Who are the losers? What amendments succeeded? What amendments uh, failed uh, that were very, very necessary? You'll find out the full details in this episode of Hello Talk. I'm an anti-feminist because I think it's oppressive. I think it's anti-male. I think it's anti-femininity. It may be a very weak Brexit, but I'll tell you what, Brexit of any kind and leaving those treaties as well. That's the best <laughs> ever interview. <laughs> With Michael Parkinson. You got nothing on this book. <laughs> G'day and welcome to Pello Talk. I'm Dave Pello. Joining me today is Dr. Rachel Carling from Right to Life, New South Wales, who was one of the key organisers in the resistance to the move to uh, spring horribly barbaric violations of human rights in legislation in New South Wales. The law got up, but uh, not all of the amendments were successful or passed. There was a mixed bag uh, there. So, um, Rachel, welcome to Pillow Talk. How are you? Thank you, Dave. Lovely to be here with you today. So, let's just do a quick rundown of it. This is kind of old news, but I think it's important to do a post-mortem. Exactly uh, what are the amendments? Let's start with the wins. What are the amendments that were successful and how did they come about? Uh, the amendments that were successful came about because of pressure. So one of the advantages, I guess, of this bill being just uh, attempted to be rushed through Parliament in three days, they absolutely believed that they would be able to get this bill through in three sitting days, both lower house and upper house. Mm -hmm. When that backfired on them and they saw public pressure and they saw thousands of people come out in the street, they did slow it down. When I say slow it down, it was two days short of two month process. So compared to jurisdictions um, around Australia, that is quite appalling. At the same time, as a result perhaps of that quick uh, process, we were able to advocate for and get amendments passed, which is something that we have not seen in Victoria or Tasmania or Queensland, for example. It is a, an interesting dichotomy there, isn't it? Because it, it was an extraordinarily rushed process, even if not as rushed as they wanted it to be, three days um, to foist some un, unwanted laws upon the majority of voters. Um, it still managed to have some better victories in the final outcome than were achieved in Melbourne and Victoria, in, in Queensland, sorry, Melbourne and Victoria, uh, Melbourne and Brisbane, um, Victoria and Queensland. So in, in Queensland, um, there were no amendments, but there was a very long process, including two failed attempts at, at horrible legislation. Um, it, it was a month and month process. Uh, I think it was well over a year, in fact. Mm. Um, but... But yeah. The um, same in Melbourne in 2008 and the same in Tasmania in 2013. They had weeks and weeks in um, sitting. They had lots of public inquiries. They put it out to reform commissions, etc. Mm. None of that happened here in New South Wales. It was very quick. It was very dirty. We came out, uh, voiced our opposition, supported our pro-life MPs and they did us proud. One of... This probably speaks to uh, an argument I really don't like. And the argument is that this, and, and it's used, it was used about the marriage debate, it's used about religious freedom debate, it was used about the abortion debate, and that was, this law is coming whether you like it or not, it's better that we do it than them, because the laws will be better under us than if, if Labor get to frame them. Um, what do you think about that argument? Because it kind of actually has some substance to it, perhaps, in the way these laws did come out, as opposed to when the left progressive governments implemented them in all of those other jurisdictions. Well, this bill came about from 15 co-sponsors. It wasn't a government bill. However, the government did facilitate it. So this is a Liberal government, so the first Liberal government who has facilitated an abortion to birth bill. Mm. Um, Shame on them. Absolutely. Mm. They have received such backlash about that, that many people in the Liberal Party here in New South Wales are bruised and mm. they will think twice about messing with the pro-life movement again, which I think is awesome. It also has really um, put out the message to people that to change these things, we must join those political parties and be a change from within. We, we absolutely must. Uh, the Green Nationals Party in New South Wales is a shadow of its former self. Uh, representative of conservative country folk who are nothing like the breed of 
four wheel driving soccer mum in a city, just space cadets who've got nothing better to do with their time than interfere with policies they know nothing about. Um, huge and, and difference yet the, during the debate from Barnaby Joyce and his colleagues in state parliament. Oh, just huge, um, just just crazy. But nevertheless. Um, I, I agree. The evidence is in that you have to be part of these parties if you want them to represent you. They will not represent you just because they're not as bad as the other guys. Um, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an indictment on, on their, their representation. Um, and you so, can't threaten their pre-selection. If you can't threaten their seats, then you're not going to make an impact. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a really good point. Look, I, I just want people to be involved and, and not to promise their loyalty to any party. That's a fundamental level we should all be at. But once we get there, there's this uh, more mature, more sophisticated strategy that you have to be in the party. That doesn't mean giving them your money or going every month to a meeting, but you have to turn up at pre-selections and you have to be um, uh, able to vote in those. And it means supporting some of the pro-life politicians that really did almost lose their careers over this and may well still lose their careers over this. There's nothing guaranteed for people like Kevin Connolly, Lou Amato and um, Matthew Mason Cox and of course Tanya Davies here in New South Wales because of the way they directly contradicted the Premier in the press and on the floor of Parliament and their careers will continue to be threatened, continue to be threatened and we need to be supporting them. Absolutely. I Without agree. them, we would not have had a lot of these amendments passed. I couldn't agree more. It's time for um, people of good conscience to join a party, especially these parties, to make sure that the candidates who do represent them enjoy their support while they continue to represent them. Keep demanding they work for you and keep demanding they, they keep the pressure up on them to do the right thing, but reward sure. them when they do the right thing and support them at the next election. Um, with with your volunteering time, with your donations, and of course with your vote. Absolutely, we had um, quite a number of impressive MPs from across the political spectrum. So we had ALP pro-lifers, we had Liberal pro-lifers. Um, unfortunately, the National Party really let us down. The Shooters, Fishers, and Farmers Party didn't in the upper house, and of wow. course we had Mark Latham from One Nation, and. Um, our stalwart in the parliament, Reverend Fred Nile, who of course stood as firmly as he did on in his inaugural speech where he mentioned the sanctity of life. So tell me about the amendments which succeeded. Tell me about the the grace that we found in, in laws, uh, that we were able to wind back some of the extreme barbarity to something approaching uh, civilised law. Okay. So there were about 18 sets of amendments in the lower house and a few more than that in the upper house. That represents hundreds of amendments all up. Some of the ones that were passed was there was clarification around what informed consent means. Now that might seem um, like an of course, but it isn't, unfortunately. Of course it isn't. Uh, there were a lot of amendments around late term abortions. So restrictions post 22 weeks. Specialist involvement, for example, it can't just be two doctors uh, like it is in other states. It must have a specialist with an expertise in gynaecology or um, obstetrics. obstetrician, obstetrics, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, and they must be done in an approved public facility. Mm -hmm. So this is not something that's going to be a, a private enterprise situation where you pay $15,000 for your late-term abortion in New South Wales and get it. So it has what about to... mail order abortions, the RU486 pill delivered with a, an e-consultation or something? Oh, you can absolutely have that. So I was talking about late term. And in okay. fact, two weeks after the bill in New South Wales, teleabortion was launched here in New South Wales and it's gone out to all states except South Australia where there is actually legislation against that at the moment. Okay. So yes, the e-consultations, uh, I believe it's $395 to uh, like a Skype appointment. Um, and you can have IU486 sent to you. Wow, so much for the approved facility. I guess for the surgical abortions, that's the case. It, yeah, that's right. The approved facility is post 22 weeks only. Ah, so, so, wow. so late term abortion restrictions, which was wow. something we tried to get, you know, they tried to get rid of all late term. Uh, when that didn't succeed, they did manage um, to get counselling, compulsory counselling for women. Considering Fantastic. Like Imagine Please. empowering a woman's decision. Um, we couldn't get mandatory counselling all the way through. That was one mm. of the amendments that failed, but we did get that. 
We and, look- it, and it's independent counselling or mandatory counselling by an abortionist? Not necessarily independent, unfortunately. Oh, but it is point? something. Yeah, I think, something. I think it is something. And I think the point is when we get hold of the health ministry, when we get a pro-life health minister, the guidelines that can be written around this that sit behind legislation, as you know, and expand on legislation, will yep. be able to use these amendments more fully. It's like asking a car salesman if you need a new car. Um, you might be getting counselling, but it's not exactly in your best interest or not at least guaranteed. There are some That's people that true. may do so. It is still a lot better than we've got in other states. And we also have care for children born alive Praise as a result of a failed abortion. Tell me about informed consent. How was that clarified? So there was a lot of debate around informed consent and um, one of the amendments that was defeated was around a woman having to make an explicit request for informed consent. So then informed consent has been clarified. And when I say woman, can I just on a side note, at the risk of going down a rabbit hole here, Dave, woman is not used in this bill. So this is the first abortion bill in Australia um, in fact, the world that we can find, and wow. if someone can correct me, that'd be great, but it describes persons. Pregnant persons. Pregnant. <laughs> um, and that was debated on the floor. Oh, Some people, goodness. like Penny Sharp talked about women and persons who are pregnant. People talked about uterine transplants. People talk openly <laughs> about transgender. And this is the first abortion bill that has brought transgender issues into it. Oh, goodness me. I mean, yeah, this is the future. It's a scary future. Uh, so, dystopian, fictional yeah. oh, rubbish. Absolutely. So there were arguments around men can get pregnant too. Um, <laughs> and we're all bigots if we don't believe that. Yes. Right. I'm glad you've just laughed because it is laughable. <laughs> yep. I actually did this and succeeded. So I believe it was Natasha McLaren Jones in the other house tried to get the word woman into the bill. And that was just rejected completely. Goodness me. Uh, feminism is well and truly dead. Feminists, you are impotent and useless. Absolutely. Uh, you've been We're defeated by transgenderism. Body, my choice, but yep. they can, it's a person. Yep. No longer talking about women. Yep. So there was that real contradiction, which was unfortunate. Um, another subtle amendment that came through was the bill was called the Reproductive Health Care Reform Bill which of course we all know is um, contradictory and it's, it's not healthcare. Mm-hmm. The name of the bill was changed to abortion. Very and honest. I, that was significant, that mm. there was an admission from the upper house that they were talking about abortion, not reproductive healthcare. Yep. And we do need to be shifting that argument. Absolutely. So, 96% of biologists agree that each human life begins at fertilization. Reproduction is a historical moment by the time you're talking about killing that new living human absolutely and i think a lot of the amendments were um i guess philosophical wins in that way Mm. and as i said once a um, pro-life health minister comes along we will be able to get a lot further here in new south wales so guidelines are being written about sex selection abortion for example now while that doesn't outlaw um various um different types of abortions guidelines opens up a huge opportunity for a pro-life health ministry. Yeah, brilliant. And what are some of the more devastating losses, amendments that failed, which are um, really, really destructive to the fundamental human rights that all members of the human family are granted by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, including life? Which, Which amendments really violate those rights? Um, Things like the prohibition of fetal body parts, that was rejected. As in Um, the abortion centres are allowed to traffic in human body parts? uh, You can read into that amendment in that way, yep. There was a lot of denial of these things happening, but they would not prohibit the sale of tissue. Um, If they don't don't happen, who's, who's harmed by the prohibition thereof? It's tissue, it's not a baby. So there was... That, that's a problem for us. Uh, we couldn't get a definition of emergency. This was something that Mark Latham brought up, that emergency is around life of the mother and that should be defined in the bill. And that wasn't defined. So I think that's very unfortunate because then emergency can be broadly defined. Mm-hmm. And emergency is the provision where informed consent doesn't have to occur. Um, the public health facility doesn't have to be um, abided by, etc. So 
that that's a real concern. Mm. We didn't get far enough on conscientious objections. Um, that was a disappointment. Can we you clarify the, that? Um, is there a is there a certain a certain liability for conscientious objectors, or is it just not clear? There, the amendment that we won in that area was around um, transferring care. So originally, the bill was to, was saying that um, a doctor or a healthcare professional must seek out someone who would do the abortion. So that's not just someone who says, I'll do an abortion. They must seek out someone who will do that particular kind of abortion. Hmm. So if someone's coming saying, I want a particular kind of abortion, I don't want this baby because of social reasons and I'm 26 weeks pregnant, they had to go and try and find a doctor who would do it for them. Wow. So it's a little bit less, but we certainly couldn't get complete freedom. We couldn't get um, a limit on the need to refer. So now um, as it, came out in the upper house doctors have to refer to a health service so healthcare direct they need to give a phone number now mm. we've had people phone that number and the advice is very patchy it's not necessarily an immediate go to an abortion clinic but the advice is extremely patchy and i, I believe that's very unsafe for our women mm. disappointingly we also couldn't get criminal penalties back in for doctors who do the wrong thing we were told no they'll just be part of the disciplinary process. We've had some horrific examples here in New South Wales. Dr. You have. Mm. Is one that um, a lot of people will remember. Who, what was her name again? Dr. Sood. Mm -hmm. That was a late term abortion where she didn't even interview the lady, gave her some um, medication and just left her to deal with quite a horrific uh, termination as a result of that. Mm. And she was found liable. We also couldn't get criminal um, penalties for coercion. So that was disappointing. Oh, my but goodness. What one, politician in their right mind would turn down an amendment against coercion? Like, like, it's like voting against making domestic violence illegal. Yes. It's exactly the same. Yes. I encourage you to read the Hansard if you're ever trying to, <laughs> you're ever going to get angry, Dave, because some of what um, the other side said was just disgusting. And we just continually heard, this is unnecessary. It's not needed. Um, you're placing additional barriers to women. You're being cruel, and the rhetoric abortion the apologists, uh, logical contor contortionists who have absolutely no regard for women's welfare at all. It's pure so, ideology for them. Yes, yes, pregnant persons. <laughs> and one thing we did get, however, was data collection. We will now know how many abortions are happening in New South Wales. Good knowledge is power. That is something. Exactly. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want information? Exactly. People who were afraid of the truth. Well, that's right. There's a lot of people who didn't. I, there was quite a few arguments against that. It actually failed in the lower house, the data collection <laughs> amendment, but it, it, we gained it in the upper house. So, hmm. very good. Where to from here? We need to remind the community and the MPs and the MLCs that went through this debate that we will not forget. We will not forget how they voted. Mm. We are going to mark the occasion every year, but we are also going to keep up the pressure. We will not forget what they have done. We will influence pre-selections. We will work from outside and from within political parties to ensure that we have a more pro-life parliament in three years' time. Yep. I imagine you've got a list of politicians who voted to liberalise abortion in New South Wales. Um, okay. I'll provide a link to that um, or include the graphic beneath the, um, the post this video is in in my website so okay. that voters watching can uh, remind their politicians that they have lost their confidence and their branch should pre-select someone else. Um, their career is over. They cannot be trusted to defend the most fundamental of human rights um, and therefore are not deserving of uh, a second chance at representing the electorate. Um, Furthermore, uh, it's up to us to join the parties and to change those who are being pre-selected and then to supply uh, not a guarantee of, of loyalty at election time, but a, an honest appraisal of all candidates available and then throw your full weight behind the most uh, just person available, whether it's from your party or from a different party. We have to honestly look at the deal breaker issues like, uh, do you care about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? And if not, 
you're not fit for office. So if you are pro-abortion, uh, you're not fit for office. It should be our generation that ends pro-abortion candidates, just like generation before us ended pro-slavery candidates. It's just unacceptable that such a person would be elected to making laws. And the result is plain. In New South Wales, it is legal to coerce a woman to have an abortion that she does not want. That's horrific. Absolutely horrific. It um, absolutely is. And it was done not in our name, as I would say in Ireland. Not right. in it was incredibly cynical of this government to do these dirty deals before the election um, and then spring it on people early in the election cycle, expecting that the voters will forget and won't punish them at the election box for a green Labor left election policy under a Liberal government. Um, so it's our duty not to forget to punish them um, and the best way to save their government is to change um, those people who are pre-selected absolutely um, and, and to change so, the leadership any final words wrap it up for us rachel i think it's just really important what you've just said dave is that we will not forget make sure that we remind our politicians if you see your politician when you're in the shopping center go up and remind them this is my issue i will vote i'm a single-minded voter I vote on values and I will vote for or against you depending on your values and how closely you share them. So I think that's really important that we keep up the pressure in all of those little ways. Yes, phoning, yes, sending in postcards, write a Christmas card to your MPs and let them know how you're mm. thinking of voting next time and that you will not forget. Um, I think those kind of things are very important. And as I said, I walked past my federal member recently. He was chatting on the street. It's very easy to slip up and say, I am against abortion and I wasn't impressed with how you, um, your rhetoric during the debate and mm. I won't be supporting you at the ballot box next time. Yep. That Brilliant. Stuns them and it hurts them and, you know, numbers count to MPs. Oh, of course. Of course. They're, every policy, um, uh, the policy that every MP agrees on is get re-elected. That's right. Very true. You don't need to be rude about it. You just need to keep constantly reminding. Absolutely. Constantly reminding. Yeah. yeah. Rachel, how can people get in touch with you personally and um, Right to Life New South Wales if they're after more information, more resources? We have our website, Right to Life New South, oh, Right to Life NSW.org.au. We also have a Facebook page which continues to grow. We have a lot of engagement on that page. So please watch out for that, Right to Life New South Wales. And of course, you can phone into our office or email us at office at Right to Life NSW.org.au. Awesome. Strength to your arm for the great work you're doing there in New South Wales. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. That's Dr. Rachel Carling from Right to Life New South Wales, just uh, updating us on the, the final uh, washout of the New South Wales abortion debate where they have liberalised um, just some, some terrible abortion laws as well as some saving graces uh, that, that would make them slightly better than the, the worst in the world in, in other jurisdictions in Australia. To uh, follow uh, Pello Talk, the places you can find us on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Twitter is at Dave Pello. And that's also the website where you will find past articles, interviews, commentary, editorials, and resources to help you be better informed. A lot of those are timeless, such as the abortion debate. Uh, the facts just don't change. A human life begins at fertilization, um, whether it's in this debate, the next one, or one that was 10 years ago. Um, the website is davepello.com. Head on there, and while you're there, subscribe to updates via email, because you never know when I'm going to get kicked off a social media platform, and you never know when they're going to stop showing me, even if I'm still allowed on there. So just make sure you're getting that weekly email with the most important articles and um, interviews there. And uh, once again, and as always, thank you to the Pello Talk partners who just chip in a little bit each month to make sure I can keep bringing this resource and information to you. The Church and State Summit is in February 2020. That's the last weekend, 28th and 29th of February in Brisbane. But we'll be in Auckland on the 25th, 
Melbourne on the 26th and Sydney on the 27th for a mini conference for the afternoon and evening with international special guest speaker, Dr. Michael Brown. For more details, tickets right now are at a very special early bird price. Um, go to churchandstate.com.au. And one final promo, if you haven't heard about it, head to sanctityoflifesunday.com.au where there is a grassroots movement to recognize uh, the fact that life is a sacred gift from God. And we're going to be doing that across Australia on the anniversary of the first legalization of abortion anywhere in Australia some 50 years ago. Um, but for more information about that and how you can get involved and how your church can get involved, please head to sanctityoflifesunday.com.au. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments.